Hello student, my name is Shanan Mitra, faculty member of Department of Electronics of Communication Engineering of Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management. My name is Shanan Mitra. Uh, today's topic is about devices and buses for device networks. So let's start with the lecture. Uh, subject name is MLS System Design. Uh, code is EC703B, lecture number 11. Uh, today's main topic is time and device, but uh, today first few slides are the continuation of the previous lecture. So, let's go on with it. Now, we have discussed about what a timer circuit or a counter circuit is about, the differences between both of them, uh, different kind of timer states. Uh, which were required to 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 properly functionable to make up to make a timer properly functionable. Um, we have described all those timer states um, as according to it. Um, now after that we are going to describe the hardware of the timer device, how the different when the timer states are applied uh, in the device and the hardware of the device and how it make it function. So let's start. Uh, first um, slide is about <coughs> sorry. First uh, slide is about uses of timer device. Um, so this is about real time clock ticks, so just like heartbeat. It's fade uh, an example effectively. Uh, initiating an event after a preset delay time. Initiating an event or a pair of events or a chain of events after a comparison with uh, or between the preset times and the counted value. Capturing the count value at the timer on an event. Finding the time interval between two events. Wait for a message from a queue or mailbox, a semaphore for a preset time when using RTOS. Watchdog timer, it resets the system after a defined time. Baud rate or beat rate control for serial communication on a line or network. Timer timeout interrupts define the time of each board. Scheduling time slicing of various tasks. Time division multiplexing. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. Now this is the timer come counting device. Now uh, here we have a uh, few important things to discuss. Uh, such as uh, initiating an event after a preset delay time uh, that's an important factor initiating an event or a pair of events or a chain of events after a comparison with between the preset time with the counted values capturing the count value as the timer on an event finding the time interval between two events wait for a message from a queue or mailbox or semaphore for a preset time when using RTOS Watchdog timer, it re resets the system after a defined time. Baud rate or beat rate control for a serial communication on a line or network. Timer, timer interrupts define the time of which board. Simple because baud or beat rate is basically the amount of pulses that uh, fade into the input. Now, this is uh, the timer come counting device. Uh, it's a counting device that has two functions. It counts the input due to the event at irregular instance and it counts the clock inputs pulses at regular intervals. For regular intervals, that's why it's known as timer come counting device because it works as a count timer and it works also as a counter. It uh, counts the clock of input pulses for regular intervals and for also irregular intervals. Now, uh, timer enable. Now, the timer enable, timer enable is the status signal for timer enable signal practically. Uh, if it is 1, it means the end bit timer will be activated. Timer stop, uh, if it is it got activated, it, uh, the timer will get stopped. This timer start, this signal to activate, it, it, this timer start signal is used to activate the timer. This uh, signal is used to deactivate, practically stop the timer. Uh, and this is, is basically used as a power on pause uh, of switch. Uh, if the timer enable status is high, then the timer is working in a working uh, state. If the timer enable uh, signal is low, uh, it means the timer is in, in a non-working state. Uh, now this is the internal clock pulse. This is the pre-scaler. 
figure we scaled it uh, up to the desired clock pulse that is required for to fit in the timer this is the timeout uh, signal status this is the load enable where the initial count uh, which basically up to 2 to the 0 to the n minus 1 it it loads the timer with the initial count and this is for up count which is true it's for down count which is false which means it means uh, if have up count is true then the down count will be false so there will be up count and, uh, and if uh, down count is true and up count is false then uh, the timer uh, will work as a down count uh, that's the specific reason of, reason of all this uh, signals that has been used here this is the positive edge or negative edge as an event uh, control variables status flags preset time count that holds the count of time status flag timer interrupt flag this is for interrupt enable so these are the order of a timer is a counter that gets clock period inputs at regular intervals and also for a uh, irregular this is for the regular intervals this is a Practically, the timer uh, st status of this hardware structure. So let's go to the next slide. Timer come counting levels. Control beats are as per the hardware signals, and corresponding beats uh, at the control register. Control beats or signals can be of nine types. As I have already described earlier, timer enable to activate timer. Timer start. To start counting at each clock input, timer stop. Sorry, timer stop to stop counting from next clock input. Prescaling beats to revive the clock out frequency signal from the processor. Prescaling be prescaling beats to divide the clock out frequency signal from the processor. Up count enable to enable up counting by incrementing the count value on each clock input. Down count <coughs> enable to decrement on a clock input. Load enable to enable loading of a value at a register into the timer. Timer interrupt enable to enable interrupt servicing when the timer outs overflows and reaches count value is equal to zero. Timer interrupt enable to enable interrupt servicing when the timer overflows reaches count is equal to zero. It's a uh, same thing. This is a repeat. Uh, this is the timer enable to activate a timer, timer start, timer stop. Prescaling beats to divide the clock out frequency signal from the processor. That's important. That uh, the processor frequency to to divide or to basically um, differentiate differentiate the clock out frequency uh, signal from the processor. We use the prescaling beats. Up count enable is to enable the up counting and down count enable is to decrement on the clock. It is basically a down count. If you have to have a down counting, we will enable the down count enable we will, uh, status flag. Or if you have to up count, we will enable the up count enable status flag. That's the basic. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. 10 forms of a timer uh, hardware internal timer, software timer, user software controlled hardware timer, RTOS controlled hardware timer, and RTOS can define the clock ticks per second of a hardware timer at a system timer with a periodic timeout events auto reloading, uh, reloading after overflow state a timer may be programmable for auto reload after each timeout one shot timer no reload after the overflow and finish state it triggers on event input for activating it to running state for its idle state it is also used for enforcing time delays between two states or events up count action timer it is a timer that increments on each count input from a clock down count action timer it is a timer which decrements on each count input timer with its overflow flag which auto resets as soon as interrupt services routine starts running timer with overflow flag which does not auto reset so these are the 10 forms of a timer now it's basically each and every um, service or device or the specific uh, specific form of timer are required for different reason take it it's a timer with a periodic timeout it's basically events auto reloading after overflow state it means 
uh, when the register is overflowed with counting it's still counting at, at the overflow state it will auto reload itself a time and maybe programmer for auto reload after each time out so after each time out is a programmable it could be programmable so there are different kind of uh, forms of time out here mm -hmm. so let's go to the next slide so software time software timer is a innovative concept virtual timing device a software which executes and increases or decreases a count variable on an interrupt from system timer output or real time clock interrupt the software timer also generate interrupt on overflow of count value or an finishing value of the count variable innovative concept this is a software timer. Let's go to the next step. Software timer. Now, how it works? Software timer is a timer based on the system clock interrupts. The interrupt functions as a clock input to an SWT. This input is common to all the SWTs that are in the list of activated SWTs. Any number of SWTs can be made active in a list. Each SWT will set a status flag on its timeout count value reaching zero. Now this is the hardware. Now we can see that software timer. Here the system tick or system clock pulse. Load software timer with num ticks and enable all control variables. SWT slash F. Control variables, status flags, num ticks count memory down count enable load enable control variables up count enable SWT running SWT finish is all the status of different kind of status of software time and that is the timeout interrupt enable this is the uh, SWT timeout flag status flag for uh, SWT or software timer idle status and for load enable so basically very much similar to the previous uh, picture of a timer hardware where we have SWT slash idle state uh, function or status state, uh, load enable status state, SWT timeout flag, SWT finish uh, state, SWT running state, count enabled, timeout interrupt enable, up count enable, load enable, down count enable, control variables. So all of these are the facts. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, now I'm going to uh, talk about watchdog timer. Watchdog timer, a timing device such that it is set for a preset time interval, and an event must occur during that interval. Else, the device will generate the timeout signal on failure to get that event in the watched time interval. Now if you read it again, you will want to understand that a timing device is such that it is set for a preset time interval. It's already the time in, amount of time interval that is going to be going to connect with is already preset. And in event must occur during that interval. Now if any kind of event that doesn't occur uh, during that time interval, uh, the device will generate the timeout signal on failure. Now, if the event doesn't occur within the time interval, it will generate a timeout signal on failure to get that event in the watched time interval. It means if we don't put that specific, if that specific event doesn't occur during that preset time interval, if that if if if, if, if that event comes within the time interval, then it's okay. If it's if it doesn't come within that time interval, the first the device will generate a timeout signal on failure money because it doesn't present at that stage. And as well as that specific event will be uh, get into the list of watch time interval. Okay. So it means it's a that's why it is known as watchdog timer. It means you have to put that event within that time interval. Other than that, it means that the if that event doesn't occur or it doesn't occur then 
that event will get into the watch watch time in the watch time interval section where it shows that within the time interval that they have waited for that event but it, that event doesn't occur it means but it the time time interval has been watched that's why it is got into the watch time interval zone on that event the watchdog timer is disabled or is disabled to disable the generation of timeout or reset it means if that on total event when the event, suppose that event doesn't occur within that time interval what will happen the watchdog timer will be disabled to disable generation of timeout or reset to to generate the timeout or reset signal we have to disable the watchdog timer that's why it has been said that the watchdog timer has been disabled to generate a timeout or reset signal that is the function it means if the event doesn't occur within that time interval that uh, device will be shut specifically the device will be disabled to generate a timeout or reset signal after the timeout reset signal the watchdog timer will again will be activated and will be operation uh, or will be function or will be or will be functionable as uh, the specific requirement are um, said or activated timeout may result in processor start a service routine or start from the beginning well, suppose we have disabled the timer the to generate a timeout signal now now you if you have to enable that uh, timer what we have to do the we have to start a service routine or start from the beginning any of it if we have if we have a service routine we will start that using the service routine program or if we don't have that we will start it from the beginning the the, the the all all the all the registers all the clock process the whole machine will reset it will start from the beginning that is the function of a watchdog timer now an application in mobile phone is that display is off on in case of no geo that's that's what the is how it happens how it works suppose we have a mobile phone a smartphone practically now that watchdog timer the timer has been connected with the touch pad of the phone now suppose we have done we have uh, we work with the phone we have done some some work with the phone and we have um, put that phone on a, in, anywhere table or something but we didn't touch the screen for a specific amount of time there is a timer that we have set it means that for suppose we have set the timer for 3 minutes or 4 minutes if we if anybody doesn't touch the phone within 2 minutes 3 minutes or 4 minutes or 5 minutes doesn't touch the screen of the phone using their hands mm, they we could set the time for to any 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 in number of minutes there are options uh, are available according to the timer that has been embedded in the mobile phone now if we set that the timer will start each time that timer will start when we touch when we pull off our hands from the screen suppose we are doing something with our hand we are typing now after ending the type after we uh, give the send button after we using the send button we just uh, pull up our hands from the screen from that very moment the timer will uh, start its counting okay the we the preset time already we have preset time interval that that, that time interval will will start as soon as we pull out our or pull up our hands from the screen now the screen doesn't no hands no no hands has uh, hasn't uh, no hands uh, touched the phone at this or this touch the screen so uh, the timer will go on it will uh, mm, it will count it will count uh, but but and suppose that uh, time interval is 3 minute now for the 3 if for 3 minutes if uh, we doesn't if we don't touch the screen with our hands what will happen it will it has watched for the event to occur but the event doesn't occur what will happen the whole phone will disable and but sometimes it, it now it depends upon the device in, in which the timer ha, uh, has been embedded according to that the device will work the timer probably is uh, in a, it is about now as the timer is disabled it will generate a timeout signal now as the as soon as the timeout signal uh, has been generated on failure it means 
the watch now that interval will be uh, goes into the list of watch time uh, in time to. now as soon as we touch the phone it will again activate it. that's what you have to say that the timeout may result in process start service will or start from the beginning now in this case what will happen the event as soon as the event occurred as soon as we touch the phone it will again activate the timer will activate at that stage now it will the, the timer device will activate it doesn't mean that timer will the timer the time interval the preset time interval has been created for a time when the uh, when we pull our hands from the touch pad or touch screen so that is the, uh, that's why it has been said uh, we already dis discussed this this is the app application in mobile phone is the display is off in case no gui uh, graphical user interface an interaction takes place within a watch time Yes, that's what we already discussed that. Let's go to the next slide. This is a real time clock. A clock which is based on the interrupts at preset intervals. An interrupt service routine executes on each time out. Now, there's a basic difference. How it happens? A clock which is based on the interrupts at preset intervals. An interrupt service routine executes on each time out or overflow of this clock. This timing device, once started, never resets or never reloaded with another value. This timing device, this timing device once started, this timing device once started never resets or never reloaded with another value. Never resets or never reloaded with another value. Used in a system to save the time and date. Used in a system to initiate return of a control to the OS after the set system clock periods. Basically what it means. It means a clock which is based on the interrupts at preset intervals. The intervals will be presets. Just that I would have done with the phone. An interrupt service routine executes on each timeout. Now e on each timeout an interrupt service routine. In this case, in case of real time clock. In case of real time clock. What will happen? The interrupt service routine executes on each timeout. This timing device once started never resets or never reloaded with another one. This time this is this way is a real time clock. Each time it will goes on. If events occur or not, it will watch that and it will work it again. That's the basic difference between watchdog timer and real time clock. So we will end our lecture uh, to this. Uh, thank you all.